Are you serious? Yes, there are plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with me, Marcus Bronzy. And me, Funk Butcher. We finished the last episode speaking about Uber. Mm-hmm. Let's start this one talking about Uber. Uber got a slap on the wrist. Slap. They've had punch, slap, drop kick. They've been in a bit of trouble quite recently. Yep. Uh, been in trouble with Uncle Apple. <sighs> so uh, the Uber founder, Travis Kalanick. Kalanick. <laughs> has a fingerprinting code in the Uber app, yeah, which basically kept the information of an Uber user mm-hmm. on their iPhone after mm-hmm. you'd wiped the phone clean. Mm-hmm. So after a factory reset, mm-hmm. Uber still had data on the iPhone. Mm-hmm. So it's not lit- so it's not to be confused with actual data on your fingerprint. Yeah. It's just a way that the customer can be traced. Exactly. So not the actual fingerprint. But the information underneath that, shall mm-hmm, we say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like travel information, mm-hmm. was kept on your phone after. So you, to get that data off your phone, you'd have to literally burn it. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Eber used to use geoforcing to prevent Apple yeah. geofencing from preventing Apple from noticing. Basically, it's a that's bit- what that's what I love about this story so much. They actually put up some sort of data force field yeah. so everyone who worked in, so everyone that worked in the Apple headquarters had no idea what the hell Uber were doing outside cloaking device that's incredible crazy right so they had this geo fencing yeah and yeah so Apple couldn't see couldn't see it on so basically their app didn't display the offending code on any phones that were accessing the app in the regions around mm. Apple HQ yeah so literally, if you stepped into the area of Apple, yeah, like their, one of their campuses, they wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah, That's sick, isn't it? I think that is the part that makes it so insidious. The, the fact that this CEO said, we're going to do something so naughty that we can't let them find out. So we're just going to put a blanket over that one building <laughs> <laughs> so they can't see us, what we're doing. Hmm. But apparently... yeah. Tim Cook found out and he wasn't best happy. How did he find out? Did he go to lunch early and steps outside the building? Hey, <laughs> what's going on out here? <laughs> Boy, well, I don't know. But I know yeah. Apple have been very against the FBI from keeping information yeah. on phones. So I guess that they're keeping an eye on it. Right? Am I right, Billy? Am I doing all right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Billy just gave me a filthy waiting, look. I was waiting for you to say the next bit. Oh, shall I do it? All right, cool. So, this is apparently how it went down. Yeah, yeah. this no, is the previous bit. Oh, you want to see what bit do you want to say, babe? Starting Tim Cook. Okay, Uber fall back. Tim Cook, Billy's telling me where to read in the script now. What produce- so Tim Cook told Uber to remove the code or face being banned from the app store. Uber fought back and said that the practice prevented criminals from installing the app on stolen phones or using stolen credit cards to book journeys and then repeat the process after wiping the phone. So basically, Uber that said it's to Uber's protect excuse. us. It's to protect us. So mm. they said, listen, if people are using stolen credit cards to book Ubers, wiping the phones clean and thinking, hey, no one can catch us. We need to find people with wiped phones and say, hey, you put stolen credit cards on yeah. details on these phones. You're going to jail. Okay. Right? Which kind of conflicts with Apple's stance on this because Apple, Apple's yeah. latest iOS update, it actually has a t- an, another tier of security. No, really? they've added to it. Yeah. What is so, it? Someone come to your house. A genius comes to your house <laughs> and says, what's your name? No, that's not you. Okay. What, what, what's this new tier? So this new tier, you... Um, Put a drop of blood. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> God, sorry. <laughs> Sacrifice. Yeah. Um, you, you have to put um, a four-digit passcode in as well as your iCloud. Have you not seen it in the new update? Oh, where they text you a... a the no, there's a, like another tier. It, uh, it prompts you to say, um, "Would you like to add another tier of security?" Oh, when if you log into one iCloud device, another iCloud device just randomly shows a code, and you have to put that in. So, no, for no, example, no. if I go to log in, a, a, a code comes up on my phone. Now, this is something completely different. What so, the this, hell is this? so this is the actual never another level of security just for your iPhone. So, when it, when I done the, the the new update, which must have been about two three weeks ago, I saw a prompt saying added another tier of security to the iPhone. It came up on the last iOS update. So I guess that's Apple's way of saying what you're, what you're trying to sell is a crock of shit, basically, because we've got our own security on board. Okay. So the, is it so, the two-step so verification? Yes. The two step, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's I'm I'm down with that. Yeah. I'm down with it. So that's already there present now. Mm-hmm. So what Uber are kind of alleging that we need to kind of bump up our security. Apple basically saying, well, you, you don't need to. We're already doing that for our handsets. Okay. Um, well, it got a little bit more WWF than that, you know, Funk. Yeah. WWE. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Billy. <laughs> Tim Cook told Mr. Colonic Irrigation to come into his office. And this is what the New York Times reported. When Mr. Colonic arrived in the mid-afternoon meeting, sporting his favorite pair of red sneakers and hot pink socks, <laughs> Mr. Cook was prepared. With yellow ones. No, no. Mr. Cook was prepared. <laughs> so apparently he said, so I've heard you've been breaking some of our rules. I feel like he's, I feel like he sounds like an evil character. So yeah. I hear you've been breaking some of our rules. Mr. Cook said in his calm southern tone, stop the trickery. Mr. Cook then demanded, this Uber, this Uber app's going to get kicked out of the Apple store. And um, basically, yeah. So basically, Mr. Kalonic said. Um, well, you know, it's not a joke. This guy, Cook, he's the most powerful man in the, in the US. He is, he's, without a doubt. Well, they're the richest company. Well, that makes him the most powerful. Yeah. But check this. K- Mr. Kalonic, yeah. uh, for the moment, was fraught with tension. And he said, if Uber's app was yanked from the app store, it would lose access to millions of iPhone customers, essentially destroying the ride-hailing company's business. Mm. Ooh, so Mr. Kalonic acceded. Okay. So, yeah. It, I find that quite, but I feel like Uber's quite powerful. If you got rid of Uber for a day, it broke the app. Lots of people would be out of money. A lot of people are one paycheck away from problems, you know. Yeah. Everyone's going to Lyft, though. Billy said everyone's using Lyft. Mm. Is that the alternative? Why is everyone using Lyft, Billy? Just over all the bad press he's been having, there's been a lot of people yeah. going over to Lyft. What's the difference with Lyft and Uber? I'm an Uber it's guy. The same thing, more or less. So what's the difference? It's, I don't, do you know is there is a difference? I think no, the I don't thing. think there is any difference. Just different people. I what think one, one's got a better PR machine. That's it. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll keep you updated on this whole Apple fighting with a Uber thing. I didn't know Tim Cook's the kind of guy to call you into your office to give you a good old spanking. Well, to be fair, if I was Tim Cook and I had the power I had in the palm of my hands, I wouldn't let anyone talk shit to me either. How would you be, Funk? God forbid. Um, how would you? <laughs> how would you be? I would call um, <laughs> my okay. assistant to pour some baby powder in my hand. And I slap this shit. <laughs> so slap him. Don't you ever do that again. <laughs> and something tells me that you actually really would, bro. Yeah. And you know, I'd, do you know how I'd make him shake? How? Do you know when you go to delete app on your iPhone and the app shake? That's how I'd make him shake, Billy. So you'd hold your hand over his head and just while he shakes. Yeah. He shakes. <laughs> slap. Don't you ever. Right. Uh, anyway, onto an app that you can get your hands on for free. There's a version for Android, and there's a ver- uh, versions for Android, and there's mm. a version for iPhone. And uh, you'll rarely hear me say that, but the Android version of this app is a little bit better than uh, because it allows you to play with more fingers. Uh, there's this <laughs> app we've been playing called Tap Roulette. Uh, me and my mates went out for a few drinks, mm. and we played a really simple game with this app called Tap Roulette. Now, with Tap Roulette, it's like j- pulling short straws. Mm-hmm. So all you have to do is put fingers onto the screen Mm. put your finger on the screen so there's a table of six of us or there's three of us in the room me and billy we all put our finger on the screen Mm. wait for a few moments and then the app goes and lights up one of the fingers now i know people that are using this to to decide who pays the bill when they go to the (laughs) restaurant we played it with shots Uh and long story short it was a good ass game what would you play uh tap finger tap roulette with um I think they need to not not my, me personally, but I think they need to use it on the the Maury show when the when the woman has brought on multiple baby fathers. They could just <laughs> and they're not sure if everyone's not the father. Yeah, if it was well, the there's father. all inconclusive. If there's an inconclusive result, yeah, then we just use the the the, the lighting of the finger. And everyone goes, oh, Some, someone someone's got to leave here paying child support. So, Shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, let's tap roulette. Check it out. Real simple one. So, um, fake news, Funk. Alternative facts. Alternative facts. Would you say there's more of those, more more fake news in the world than usual, or we're just wising up to it, or... I what? don't know, Marcus, it's too yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, we're getting swamped, especially around election time. I'm seeing pictures of um, uh, the, the, the Labour frontrunner, Jamie Corbyn, in... in uh, Jamie? Uh, Jeremy, oh, is it Jeremy? <laughs> Jamie Corbyn, <laughs> Jamie Corbyn uh, in a, a very, very pimpish 
a fur coat and I, I can't tell if it's real or not this is amazing photoshop skills and that's the thing sometimes the fake news isn't just in text it's, it's imagery as well oh the photoshop gang are amazing incredible amazing well google's taking a lot of time to tackle fake news mm-hmm. and one of the ways they're going to be tackling it is by teaching kids from the age of 13 to 18 years old via a series of workshops called Internet Citizens. It has been designed by experts from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue, UK Youth and Liberty, whilst Google has an advisory council which includes the Metropolitan Police and Think Tank Demos. So the workshops are gonna shops are gonna be helping young people find a positive sense of belonging online and teach skills on how to participate sensibly and responsibly and use tools such as flagging and comment moderations to make the web better for all. This is insane. So what, can- what, what I feel like we're just developing a, a generation or, or, uh, of um, perspective Jason Bournes. <laughs> who, who really needs to know a skill set of whether or not your, what you're reading is real or fake kind of thing? I guess leave it up to the professionals, but... Given training normal average folk to kind of decipher the the nuances in the text to see if it's real or not, that sounds very much like they're they're trying to create some CIA operatives. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> so you think this might just be advanced training? Yeah, but for a young age. Yeah. So they want to see who excels at this. Listen, when you add, when you add that to uh, uh, a competent. A uh, Wing Chun skill set, then yeah, you've you've got some yourself some soldiers. When you add that to a Krav Maga skill yeah, set, somebody yeah. who can batter you with a kitchen kettle. Yep, you send them in behind enemy lines. That's somebody it. that can make somebody scream for mercy with an orcs lead, <laughs> and we ain't talking about the lead, the tip of it. Um, I do, uh, isn't it a lot easier to solve fake news? Forgive me if I'm oversimplifying this. Mm-hmm. Isn't it just a case of Switching off the internet. See it. <laughs> there's like, I reckon there's two ways to solve it. Look at it and, mm-hmm. and then go, hmm, I might be interested in finding out whether this is real because this might affect me or it yeah. interests me a bit more than your usual bit of pap on social media. Let me go and check if it's on the BBC website. Look at the URL. It's probably yeah. like, yeah, but secrets th- exposed. Yeah, me. and if it's like, and if it's like conspiracy theory.com and it's conspiracy theory and obviously I know it's going to cook and then if I, if it's not real, yeah, Leave it alone. But I think that's where we're at now, where even reputable news sources are being questioned. And um, especially over the back of the the, the recent kind of general election campaign coming up, um, people are questioning the the bias that some stations are are kind of leading with to some political parties because they've they've got a vested interest. So... It's not the it's not the the news per se or or where the news is coming from. It's the fact that um, certain news is obviously being withheld, and that's kind of fallen into the whole alternative facts here. The okay, s- the sense that you're getting seventy seventy percent of the, the picture as opposed to the full hundred, which doesn't constitute a lie, but it's it's just not a full picture of events. Okay. So yeah. again, this whole distrust is. It's gonna, it's gonna turn inside in his head though, because what happened to the boy who called, uh, who called Wolf. Eventually, he got, he got gobbled up. So why don't we just change it then? The class goes like this. In fact, I will run the class for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're listening, Google, I'll run the class. I will show the kids a series of articles and ask them to guess which ones are real and which ones are fake. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the class, I will say all of them are fake. Yeah, that's the rule of the internet. Everything's <laughs> fake. Don't believe it. Yeah. Is that the best way to move forward? Then Might just as don't well. move anything. Might as well. I'm very sceptical anyway. Yeah. I mean, at, there was a time when you were watching The Simpsons and um, Donald Trump was president on the cartoon and that would have been fake news. Yeah. But look, it's not... It's, Everyone it's, laughed at it. It was entertaining. It exactly. Was, it was... It is reality. Pigs might fly. Yeah. I mean, to be honest about the BBC, I mean... I mean, so for example, the what Funk's kind of danced into with that one is, is for example, the BBC might might be showing a lot of pro Labour stuff at the mm-hmm. moment because they know under Tory government they're getting absolutely starved. Yep, they're falling up. No foods coming yep. in. No money's coming in because yep. they're a public service provider. Mm-hmm. Whereas 
a public service provider that might be getting a bit of money on the side mm. and the government might look after them. I mean, people are going on like corruption isn't... Oh, oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to off a seat. Fucking others died. Oh. Fake news. Fake, fake news. news. Fake news. That's what fake news does to you. Did your life flash before your eyes? Uh, I had a... Re- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a real moment there, you know. I had a real moment. <laughs> and I was about to talk about corruption in this country. But I mean, police corruption exists. Yeah. And corruption. Well, I mean, we've had some of the biggest, like, you know, Rupert Murdoch, man. Like, yeah. And you know what I f- is funny is the press... That has happened and we still have a lot of ignorance about it. So long Mm -hmm. story short, because this is going to sound like a conspiracy theory. Somebody got killed. Let me get my tinfoil hat on. Yeah. But this is real. Somebody got killed. Yeah. And the people that were covering it up, or there's a lot of like confusion around, were working for the News of the World Mm -hmm. and News Corp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And ended up working for the fucking government, bro. Mm -hmm. So -hmm. people that could cover up murders are working for the government. Mm -hmm. Let's not be silly out here. Mm. Shit's got getting hidden Corruption's got some Great yeah. progression roots And there were people That were like Hacking into voicemails Same group yep. of people Yep So like we forget Real quick And I think And I think I people, don't think we forget I think it's just a case of It's forgetting it, fun It becomes normalised Because no one knows How to stop this I think people fucking forget I think people forget Like people forget Like what caused the recession mm. The banks Yeah It's simple Bunch of bankers Did some moves Fuck the whole world. Yeah. That's it. But people are like, oh, you know, with this recession. I'm like, no. Bunch of bankers. Mm-hmm. Like if I sell, sell, sell someone it like that, they're like, nah. I don't think they'd nah. say no. That's that and nah. that's what it is. I feel like the general public out there believe that there is a tier of society or a tier of of business which it, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't bode well going up against them. You you're gonna lose. It's like um the Undertaker when he was had his streak, man, you, you just couldn't beat him. You, yeah, you can't win. <laughs> you couldn't beat him. You come back from the dead. You need a Lesnar. <laughs> yeah, you need a Brock Lesnar. Who's the, who the Brock Lesnar be? Yeah, who's the Brock Lesnar in business? Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, he's he's more like a flipping. What's his name? <laughs> he's more like a what? James Ellsworth. <laughs> James, James Ellsworth. Ellsworth. Please Google, describe Google James, James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth. Please, Ellsworth. please describe him for the listener, please. Uh, but, but, Billy's like Google James Ellsworth. Billy's going to be some scorny guy. Yeah, he's a scorny guy. Yeah, Think yeah. about James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth is one of the slimmest people I've seen. Oh, come on. That is, he's just a normal guy. He has no oh, chin. He has, oh, come on, oh, Billy. Oh, man. And he has absolutely no chin. Oh, don't do that to Jeremy, man. He has no chin. Oh, the poor guy. <laughs> Oh. oh, and there's like loads of rumors about why he has no chin. Like some people say that it was bitten off by a dog. Oh. <laughs> it was a bad wrestling yeah, move. See, look, fake news has slipped into that. Anyway, speaking of fake news, see, I was skeptical when I heard this. Instagram is apparently now way more popular than Snapchat. Yes, I heard that. So Facebook have announced that over 200 million daily users is their current figure, up from 150 million in January. 50 million users. January. April in three and a bit months. So s- start that again from the top. What have you heard? Facebook, yeah, have announced that they have over two hundred million daily users. You said Instagram. Facebook owns Instagram. Oh, oh okay, 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 wait, wait. Yeah, the number of report, the number reportedly in. Okay, one second, we get into this. Because I heard, ah. I heard a story that Instagram, whatever Instagram stories now uses the feature more than Snapchat stories does. So a feature that they took from Snapchat, yeah. now Instagram use it, people use it more on Instagram. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I meant yeah. to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. But, that's brilliant. That's really? business, man. Do you really think that's yeah, true? Yeah, that's business. Where's the numbers, Oh, you don't man? think it's true? I don't know, where's the numbers? Well, to begin with, Instagram had more users anyway than right. Snapchat. Okay, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, so, that, that's not disputed. I feel so like, giving everyone, them a Snapchat account. More or less. Yeah, exactly. So you're Are giving, you feeling that you're using Snapchat less? I was never using it to begin with. So, so uh, using uh, it less than not ever? Yeah. So, so <laughs> what, you're slapping it out of other people's hands? What's, what's less than 0%? Um, yeah. So you run up to people and punching their phones yeah. out of their hands. <laughs> so do you use Instagram stories? Yeah, so because I'm an Instagram user, I'm more likely to use the Instagram story because I was already there. Fair enough. So I guess they captured all of that end of the market. 
What does this mean for us? Well, it's like it was something we anticipated because Instagram came in with a bid. Snapchat got sassy and said, if you want some of this, you better give me some more kind of thing. And then the Instagram, oh, you're going to act like that bitch? And then they went away. <laughs> <laughs> they went away and then they made their own their own little uh instagram story and then it came back bigger and better so hmm mm. i guess it's just um uh, uh well i wouldn't even call it a slight oversight um short-sightedness from snapchat See? thinking that the their competitor wouldn't go down this route so they lost out yeah they fucked around and got complacent and got yeah. fucked up mm-hmm mm-hmm Damn, Daniel. What about if Facebook came out with their own Twitter? Oh. What about if Facebook came out with their own Twitter? I think that'd be the end of Twitter. Apparently, though, Twitter is 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 Twitter the one that's struggling out of all the social yeah. medias to monetize? Yeah, badly. I think it's I think it's the best one. Yeah. Billy thinks it's the best one. I like Twitter's rawness. And then sometimes when I see some of the rawness, I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel bad for people. I feel like people that can't handle a trolling. Yeah. are in the wrong room yeah. when they step into the room of Twitter. Twitter is a Twitter is an exciting and fresh place because I feel like it's harder to infiltrate with bullshit. Yeah. Like I'm talking about the com- like it's harder for people to come in and just like you know like with Facebook a lot of the time your feed is very heavily edited. Yeah. Like and it's it's quite hard for you to un ed- like like it's hard for you to adjust your feed so that you're seeing things in just a chronological order. Yeah. Whereas with Twitter you still have that option. Yeah. Like, yeah, they go like, here's a couple of things that happen that you might want to check out. Yeah. But you can go on a, t- on a hashtag and watch things unfold in real life. Yeah. And sometimes you can watch that. Like, there could be something really bad happening in the world on f- Twitter, but you go on Facebook and all you're seeing is like, hashtag Friday. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's really, it's quite interesting. So I, li- I do like, I do like the rawness of Twitter mm. and I, I like the fact that it's still relatively basic. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like it's more of a connection to a person. Like, Insta's cool. It's funny. Mm. But if I want to see what people think, Twitter's a very interesting place. Yeah. I'm still baffled why they haven't been able to kind of monetize it successfully yet because I use Twitter out of all the social media platforms more than the others. And If they charged you per tweet, they'll be making dough. <laughs> making money. They're probably going to have some sort of uh, premium Twitter service if you want to type more than 140 characters. Then you have Ooh, to <laughs> would that tempt you in? A little, a little what two, a, a little two ninety nine a month, a little two pounds ninety nine a month, or something like that. Throw that at you, uh, Billy. You just talking over the show, like ragged. <laughs> no, you can't talk I, to Billy, right? I had a, um, I was just doing tags, and I wrote fake butcher instead of fake butcher. <laughs> fake butcher. Fake butcher. Oh, damn. Um, well, what was I saying? Uh, Would I accept the premium yeah. rate? Two ninety nine a month. No, one ninety nine a month. It's because I've had it free now. I feel like I'm of that generation, just like this generation now, who are coming into the 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 the, the world of music, where they can literally can download off SoundCloud, they can stream. Well, I guess streaming you are paying for, but um, if you enter your first experience of something is that you get it for free, then you're you're kind of gonna be get your back up a little bit when you're when you're um you're charged for it so it's going to be very difficult to kind of um recalibrate the kind of the the mindset of of people that have been getting something for so long of such a, a good quality as well for for next to nothing Fair i enough. mean you must have seen tweets where you get this tweet and it's absolutely hilarious and it's got like 20 20 000 tweets and the actual sub tweet will say something like I can't believe Twitter is free because you can't. The, yeah. the humor and the, the the kind of the stuff that you see on there, you're just like, really? This is better than TV, and yeah. you're paying for TV. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm with you on that. I still like the people that ask for like free food, like McDonald's. How many retweets till I can get free, <laughs> free Happy Meals every day for a life? Well, there was that girl in America. She got um, she asked for a certain amount of retweets to get a free boob job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a guy that wants chicken nuggets he's got to get 18 million retweets from what? Wendy's and he's only on like three and a half for how many nuggets three nuggets better be 18 three million nuggets for a year oh really okay mm, yeah. okay but imagine that though 18 million retweets what that does for your company now you have my attention <laughs> 18 mil what's that line that um um Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio says in Django oh uh you had my 
Sam, and now you have my. Now you have my attention. Yeah. <laughs> you puts, yeah. The, puts the glass down. You had my ears. Yeah. And now you have my, my attention. attention. I think it's Nuggets for Carter is the hashtag. Nuggets for who? Carter. His name's Carter. That's my son's name. Yeah. So it's, it's Nugs for Carter. Hashtag <laughs> Nugs for Carter. And uh, yeah. So Wendy's. So he tweeted them saying, "How many that is probably my do son. I need?" Is, you sure it's, not, sure it's not my son? Nah, he's a little. He likes bit, Nuggets as well. A little bit lighter than you. I really. <laughs> you are not the father. Uh, so on April the fifth, Carter Wilkerson said, "Yo, man, a man needs his nuggets." <laughs> How many retweets do I need uh, for a year, a year's worth of free nuggets? Wendy said 18 million. But bruv, Wendy's has earned 330 million social impressions and gained 150,000 followers on Twitter just from this. Wow. Just from this. But he's uh, he's now at 3.2 million retweets. Yeah, I know he's on about three. Um, so yeah, he's 200,000. He's less than 200,000 retweets away from... Um, Ellen's for Os- her Oscar retweet. Oh, really? Yeah. From the Nug. Oh, we need to please find a tweet. Nugs for Carter. Can we tweet out Nugs for Carter on How to Kill an Hour? Please? Can we retweet Nugs for Carter? If you hashtag Nugs for Carter, we need. I want Carter to get his Nugs. Yeah. I want the power of man well, to give I- a man the most retweets ever. Have you have you tried Wendy's Nuggets before? Are they really on the level with um with uh, McDonald's? Hell no. But a man needs his Nuggets. McDonald's levels are are are, are some. Platinum shit, man. You know what? For shit, they ain't really made out of real bits of chicken. That's the no! delicious as shit. Stop putting Come out on, the man. fake news. That's Come the fake on. news. Really? No. That's the fake news All I'm right. talking about. When I say not real bits, they you have... take, take a McDonald's chicken select and break that in half and look at the chicken and then try and break a chicken nugget in half McDonald's. and the batter will come off and the chicken will go... <laughs> and, then you, and then you blow on the chicken nugget, yeah? And then you find something that you've written in pencil and you rub the chicken nugget on it and it works better than any eraser ever. Now, I'm not saying... That McDonald's chicken uh, chicken nuggets are bad for your health, but yeah. they're the tastiest rubbers I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> you can take that how you want. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. <laughs> Thank you for killing some time with him, Funk Butcher, and him, Marcus Bonzi. <laughs> <laughs>